Hello, I am Mrs. Peach Harleton. Today I wanted to show you how to create a mystery pixel reveal. Let's dive in. So this mystery pixel reveal can be used with any subjects. That, that is the neatest thing about it. It's best if the students can answer with a letter or a number, a single letter, a single number, so there's no confusion. So what I do is I first create a Google slide presentation going over all their problems. In this case, I'm gonna be doing angle pair relationships. And I've just created this multiple choice, one, two, three, or four. And they're just gonna drag their circle and place it over the correct. Once they are done with this, I will link them to the pixel art that I have created. And that will reveal to see if they've gotten the right answers. If they haven't, their whole picture is not gonna show up. So let's head on over to a blank spreadsheet. So here I am in Google Sheets. If I click this magic box over here in the top left corner, it highlights the whole spreadsheet. If I click here, see it highlights blue and I can drag it, it will automatically resize all my boxes. The smaller your boxes, the better your pixel image will look, but also more time consuming. So now that I have that, I'm gonna click off to the side to unhighlight everything. And I just need two columns over here. I'm gonna spread it out, make it three wide, spread my B out, one, two, three boxes wide. There we go. The first row is gonna be my question, and the second one is going to be my answer. So this is gonna be question one, question two, and I can continue down this path numbering them, or if I highlight both boxes and then drag it down, it will go ahead and drop all the numbers in order for me so I don't have to keep numbering them. So these numbers correspond with the numbers on the problem. So what I like to do is start with the image, and that's probably the hardest part. So you're going to draw your image here. I'm gonna start out with a basic, let's just do a happy face. That will be the easiest one to create. And I'm gonna highlight my boxes, trying to visualize a happy face. I'm gonna put a black border, go to the fill bucket, change it to black. If I hold down control, I can highlight multiple boxes. So you can see it's starting to take shape, it looks like a circle. So if you click on a box and you don't want it, just click on it again, it will unhighlight it. Now they're all highlighted, go to my fill bucket, and I'm gonna turn that to black. Hopefully my happy face is big enough. I'm gonna just highlight all of this in the middle, and I'm gonna turn it yellow. Oh, this one changed, and we don't want that one to be yellow, so just highlight it, and then reset it. And we'll change it back. Actually, that one was supposed to be black, not blank. So highlight it, change it to black. There we go. Then you're just gonna hold down your control button. If you drag, you can highlight multiple boxes at the same time. Holding down control, highlight all my boxes that I want to be yellow. Go to the fill bucket, make them yellow. Clicking off to the side will take the highlight off. I'm just gonna keep this very, very basic. I want an eyeball here and one here. And we'll do a nose. Maybe I'll do these two as the nose. And let's do a little smile. This is looking more like a jack-o'-lantern, just saying. But maybe it's because it's Halloween. We could add a stem up here and change all the yellow to orange. Those are your options. And I'm just gonna create them black. There we go, we have our happy face. Now I have eight questions. I don't have eight colors. However, with the different answers, I can have it mystery reveal different parts of the image so the students won't have any idea what the image is going to be. So once you have your image drawn, now I'm gonna start formatting my questions to show which pixels will appear with each answer. So click on the first answer box, notice it's in B2. Then I'm gonna to go to Format, Conditional Formatting. Notice it shows B2 already here. Format cells if, go all the way down to the bottom. I wanna do a custom formula. Go to the value or formula equals dollar sign B dollar sign two equals 
After the equal sign is where you're going to put your answer. If it's words, if it's a number, if it's a letter, whatever it is. For right now, I'm just going to put a one as a placeholder. And we can come back later once I figure out the answer to number one, question number one, two, so on. Then I can come back and change this. I'm going to do the yellow to keep it simple. I'm going to stay in the same color. Yellow. Click on my range. Hold down control and click on some of these yellow boxes here, these pixels. And then click on OK. And make sure you come over here and click on Done. So that rules apply to these five boxes that I have highlighted. So I'm done with my first question. And I've already chosen those pixels. So I go up to the fill bucket and I press reset and it will take the color away. So I know I've already chosen those, so I won't choose them again. Let's go ahead, go to the next one. Question two, my conditional format rules are already open here, so I can just go add another rule or go back to format, conditional formatting. Here's our rule, format rule, scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to choose some more yellow. Change the color here in the spill bucket. Now we need our range to be equal to dollar sign B, because we're in column B, dollar sign 3, because we're in row 3. That's where our answer is going to be. And again, we're going to put equals to and a 1. You're going to come back later and change just that number one to whatever your answer is for question number two. Let's go up here, choose our range, holding down control because I'm working on yellow. I'm just going to choose some more yellow pieces. I can left click and hold this and drag it up. Click OK. Again, come over here and click done. They're still highlighted. Go to my fill bucket, click on reset. That will bring them back to the white background. That way I know I've already chosen those. formatted all of our answer cells. Currently all my answers are one, but you can go back and change those. And if you click on each one, you can see over here as I click through, I noticed I forgot to put the equal. I can go back and add that. Equal, we need to have an answer there. So that'll work. Okay, so once my picture is gone, that means I'm done with all my formatting. And remember, I put all my answers currently as one. I'm going to go back and change them to whatever my answer is. That's the neat thing about this. This same image, once you format the image, it can be used for different things. Maybe not in the same school year, or it could be in the same school year. So, but look here, if I put a one, those pieces start revealing themselves. This is how it's going to appear for the students as they answer the questions. So once the students input all the answers, their image is going to be revealed. So you can create this as complex, these images as complex as you want them to be. It can be very basic like my little happy face, or you can do a beach scene or Lilo, or is that stitch? That's stitch. However you want to create your image. Of course, the more detail, the more time consuming. But remember, once you've created it, you are going to have it for years to come because all you have to do is go back in and change the answers. If you have a different 
activity for the students to do, you can change the answers and have it apply to something else. Hope you enjoyed this. Remember, step out, be uniquely wonderful you. Have a great day.